Oh, there we go. Hi, Tammy. Hey. How are you? See technicalities, right? (laughs) (laughs) Work the button. (laughs) Yes, I know, right? I always say, just push it. Just see if it'll work. Push the button. (laughs) Oh, well, Amy should be here. She's been having some technical difficulties trying to get on here. Oh, it looks like she's coming. Yeah. There she is. Um, hi we're just talking about technical difficulties how it's how crazy it is just trying to connect so hang on i just want to make sure you guys can um see me here yes good we're good okay yeah technical difficulties and i'm running around like a chicken with our head cut off just like all of us during the holidays so my apologies um Oh my goodness. I, yeah. You know, anyway. Yeah, it's all good. We we're just waiting for you to be able to connect. So we're all yeah, good. Yeah, thank you so much for joining me. And look at this. I don't even have an apron on. Here, hang Uh-oh. on. <laughs> and I don't see Elizabeth on here. I, Naveed, is she coming on? Okay. Well, how is the holidays going for everybody? Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do Crazy. any of you guys, I mean, you look a little young, but do you, any of you guys have a, a, some grandkids? Three, three, two, and three? one. I'm fun. Okay. How about you? I, I didn't hear your question. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> do you have any grandkids? Oh, oh yeah. I have two. I'm 56. So I'm not that young. Well, you're <laughs> young. You're younger than I am. So you're young. And me too. <laughs> yes I have two and I yeah I had them almost they've been around almost all weekend because we were celebrating uh, our Christmas and early Christmas with my older son so oh yeah Christmas out right now I'm like it could be over <laughs> um oh yeah I bet my apologize who's who is who here Lisa I'm oh. Tammy oh. she just joined us and uh Justine's been on she was on our live oh, yeah. chat so and- we're Justine with the well, you both have glasses. We all have glasses. Oh my gosh. With so the bookcase. And I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Emmy. Emmy? Tammy. 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 Okay. So Tammy. Okay. Tammy and Justine. Okay. Gotcha. Well, um, in fact, I just made this. We're, we're going to go ahead and do the recipe first because usually I have, because I was running so late. Again, my apologies. It's Lisa's looking at me like, Amy, you got to get your act together. So next week we're having a planning session and I'm getting a calendar together. That's for darn <laughs> sure. Is this Elizabeth? Oh, that's Liz. Hey, Liz. Liz. Oh yeah. Liz. Hey, Liz. How you doing? Um, oh, you're so we're going to go ahead with the recipe. I just want to know, are any of you guys making this with me? Sorry. I'm watching. I'm watching. Okay. That, that, that's fine. Um, This is a very, very easy recipe. To me, sometimes we always want to pull out, okay, last minute appetizer, we're going somewhere, our family's coming over, or someone's showing up later that day. And I don't know, I I like simple, I don't like something too complicated. um, Because I think of my house as just, you know, warm and comfy. And I don't want, I don't want to be, well, what's the word, Lisa, too pretentious or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so anyway, I'm, I'm, I've been cooking for a long time, but I, I, I'm a simple chef. I'm a simple home cook. (laughs) I grew up on casseroles in the Midwest, you know, but anyway, so this is a very basic, uh, 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 but it's good. I I really like it. I made it yesterday for a little uh, Christmas party that we were having with Chris's poker buddies and their wives and everything. And I thought it turned out great. Of course, you buy, you know, mushrooms at Costco and they're on steroids. I mean, you don't (laughs) find these mushrooms in the grocery store. These are like huge. I could have almost not quite doubled the recipe, but added a little bit more. So I'm not going to do all of these. I think the hardest thing about the mushrooms, the one thing I've learned over the years too, you should not wash your mushrooms with water because they're very absorbent. It's like an eggplant. Anything you put on it, they're very absorbent. And so they'll soak up that water. So if you want to saute your mushrooms and brown them or bake them, 
it's best just to wipe the dirt off. And I just use a, um, you know, piece of paper towel and I, and I just do that. It's going to be fine because um, mushrooms will, if you wash your mushrooms, like I said, they'll absorb the water and they just won't roast or get that nice brown color. It's one of the reasons why you don't add salt to your saute pan if you want, if you slice up your mushrooms and you want them brown because um, they'll just soak it all up and they'll release their waters and you're more or less steaming your mushrooms instead of um, sauteing them, roasting them, or you know, wanting them to turn brown. Of course, or if they're mixed in with other stuff, that's okay. So I just use this. This is the hardest part because you don't want to um, break your mushroom. So I just use this little, you know, appetizer spoon type of thing. And I just scoop out the rest of the stem and I'll sometimes get in there in the sides. Because if you're going to stuff them, you want people to have some of the stuffing and not just a little bite because every bite you take of the mushroom, you want them to have a bite of the stuffing as well. And like I said, normally I have this all prepped, but I don't today. So I'm going to line my little baking sheet with parchment. Parchment to me is a godsend. Yeah, I, I see that now on almost every recipe. If there's baking involved, it's always parchment. So I do. And I know they have those uh, silicone, you know, little pads and everything. But I don't know. You got to wash that or at least wipe it down or something. I think this will be enough for this. I don't know if I have to go bigger. Like I said, I normally don't stop. Oh, here. Let me turn my phone off. Sorry, guys. I didn't hear it. Did you guys hear it? No. Oh, sorry. We didn't hear it. Well, it's ringing. <laughs> oh, it's, I wonder if it's my dad. Oh, Lord. Oh, crap. Well, if it is, we're fine to... Yeah. He, it's hard to connect with him sometimes. See, you're getting real life Amy Roloff. This is I love it. I love it. <laughs> real life, guys. I am so sorry. I sent my dad. I ordered some, some flowers from my dad, you know, just like to have a little uh, centerpiece and everything. And um, that was from Chelsea, Michigan. And I think it's the florist that may be calling me like they couldn't deliver it or something. Oh. Listen, this is not a great day. What is going no, on? No, this is light. This is the best thing. They see this is light. Mm -hmm. No, it's a Monday. <laughs> oh, my apologies. Oh. You know, I've been having a hard time sending him something. It's so weird. I um, your call cannot be completed in style. The call party is busy. Oh yeah, here we go. Again later. Okay, okay. Here we go. Nice. Now I definitely feel like I'm in her kitchen, like sitting right there in front of her. You are. <laughs> Hang on. I love it. <laughs> yeah, hi, this is uh, Amy Roloff and you guys just called me in regards to a, a floral delivery to Gordon Knight. Yeah. And it's the driver at the house. Okay, good, good, because it's for my almost 94-year-old dad, and sometimes he may not hear, you know, the knocking on the door and stuff. Yeah, she ended up, she ended up getting him, so it was okay. Our driver was there um, and then called us, and we always try to call from the flower shop number. Okay. Because they're always calling from a cell phone, you know, and yeah. so, um, Well, the other thing is, too, um, I'm calling from Oregon because I'm his daughter, and... Um, he may not always get his phone. So that's why I left my phone. So I'm glad it all worked out. Thank you. Okay, thanks. 
Oh my God. Hello. Okay. <laughs> okay. People are just going to shoot me. Sorry. Hang on. Oh Lord. Um, well, we could take some questions um, while she's while she's getting together. Okay, I know here we are. We are Amy. making crab meat stuffed mushrooms. I never told you the rest uh, the recipe, did I? We're gonna ask. We're gonna get a couple questions in. Oh yeah, now, definitely. Okay, Tammy, you're you're new to the scene here. Now you see how <laughs> chaos, life, and chaos with Amy roll up. <laughs> Well, you, you know what is so embarrassing is that I act like I've never done this before. I've done this, you know, like this kind of video call, Zoom call, recipes, like a lot. And yeah. I, well, I think that if I wanted to watch Food Network, I'd watch Food Network, right? So <laughs> I think watching this, it just brings a little bit of reality to the experience, right? Because nothing is perfect in life, you know? We all and have I haven't stopped lockdown. the camera and all that other stuff. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I, I stop saying you're sorry. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. thank you for that. I, I appreciate the grace. Yeah. So what did you want to ask me? Um, I guess my first question is, are you gonna make these for Matt? Oh yeah. <laughs> I know how much you <laughs> well, he won't be invited to come over. <laughs> but one of the reasons, you know, when we when Chris and I go to other people's house, um, there's a lot of stuff. I know I say I'm a lot. That's not good. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff that I would like to make. But, yeah. you know, when you're going over to someone else's house to celebrate something together, I like to make something that, you know, Chris would enjoy and eat as well. And I'm grateful that he likes mushrooms. So I've stuffed mushrooms before with other things and sausage and stuff like that but the people we went over don't eat they eat chicken but they don't eat like pork or sausage yeah. and beef and all that other stuff so I thought well it's the holidays crab meat is pretty good and I was lucky enough to find you know whatever local grocery store you have um um crab meat but it's best to get lump crab meat yeah. I've the meat that. will be okay, mm. but the lump is better. So anyway, so no, uh, no, he <laughs> won't be invited. But I know if I know some, like when my daughter-in-law and my son come over, you know, for a, a long time, they were vegetarians, but, and, but they ate seafood and then um, they have opened up to eating chicken Oh, so that's they're new. coming over for Christmas dinner, uh, Jacob and Isabel and Zach oh. and Tori and family. And so I ordered a, a ham. So I got to call them up. I said, oh, you guys don't eat ham. But what I will do is I'll cook up two chicken breasts for them. Yeah. Uh, just because, you know, I I, I mean, I'm, I'm faith based, but uh, there's something in the Bible. I can't quote it, but there's something in the Bible like... Um, you know, if you know, if you're inviting someone into your home and you know that they don't like something, why would you serve something that they don't like or can't eat or something? It's just, mm -hmm. it's just rude. Except but if it's your ex-husband. <laughs> but if you do, <laughs> yeah, except for that. I have one of those. I have an ex-husband, but I've been married now to my second husband for, it'll be 20 years in August. Oh, wow. Oh, you're similar to like Lisa. Oh, yeah. let me tell you something. The second time around, way yes. The first, you know what you want, what you will tolerate, what you won't, and yeah. what a difference. It took me three times. <laughs> oh, oh dear God. <laughs> well, you know, I think for me, uh, getting married uh, the second time in, you know, life, it, it it was on that crest of a different season of my life, too. I'm yeah. really very grateful that we didn't get divorced and the kids were still young because that, mm. oh, I hear so many stories. That can be a nightmare and yeah um, I, my husband adopted my three children when we got married so, so wow. did my husband yeah. my husband adopted my son too yeah it's the best so it's literally and now we have grandchildren named after him so I mean it's just oh. it's been, yeah we have a little grandson named Michael wow um, yeah that is so, awesome yeah so our grandchildren are three two and one 
And wow. uh, I get the whole, you know, you got to accommodate the people that you welcome into your home because yeah, they're all different. Yes, and, they are. Yeah. And you tend to just do what you need to do <laughs> yep. and make however many dishes you need to make. Right, right. Well, yeah. Or at least you have something that they can yeah. have. Exactly. It's like having somebody that's gluten free come to your party. You're going to have gluten free desserts, you know, or a gluten free meal. Well, that you or know? I'll buy something. That'll... I'll buy something that's gluten free because that... I, I don't know gluten free very well. Yeah. Uh, gluten free is hard. That's, that's me. I'm, I'm gluten free. You but are? The other thing I am. is, but the other thing is, too, I also think if someone's invited you and you didn't know that they were that, mm -hmm. or if you're not familiar with cooking that way, I often say, hey, feel free to bring yeah. something over yeah. that you would like to eat or want to share with, you know, I'm all open, you know, for that. Because like one time I went to a girl's event and there was this one woman there. But the problem I had with that is that not only was she gluten-free, but she was dairy and all of this mm -hmm. other stuff. And the <laughs> host was like, well, I don't have that. You yeah. know, I, I don't have non whatever. And I thought if you have that many things that you may not be able to eat, but you want to join the group, I yeah. think out of courtesy to the host, bring your own stuff because it's that's a lot hard. for a host to expect a host to be yeah. able to accommodate a lot of those things. Yeah. Plus you Liz, want to, that's just my right. opinion, wants to go to a, yeah. who wants to go to an event and be sick? you know, because they ate something maybe that they shouldn't have. So yeah. it's the safe way to go. And Liz, sometimes as a you... host, you forget, you forget, oh, I added this in it or this is in it. Yep. Yeah. You know. Liz, do you have to bring things sometimes to parties that you go to just to feel comfortable, like that you don't get sick from eating something there? Or... Um. Yeah, I do. Or I eat before mm. and um, then just kind of nibble. Um, Usually, yeah, just nibble. Yeah. Usually there's it, something I can eat, but it's not going to be substantial enough, but um, yeah. I'll survive, you know, the evening. <laughs> and sometimes I just, I just don't think, you know, anyone should blame the host because um, they still want you included. They just may not know how to serve or cook. Mm -hmm. um, being, being the way that um, with the allergies that I have, I usually ask the host beforehand and yeah. be like, Hey, is there going to be anything, you know, that I could eat there or just ask a couple things. And then, so I'm prepared. I'm never yeah. going to go and just assume that they're going to have something I can eat. Yeah. And, and I thought this one woman, I thought, boy, that's a lot to ask. If you like you, Liz, like you mentioned, you didn't give someone a heads up mm -hmm. and to give them the opportunity to be able to accommodate or let you know, unfortunately, you know, I don't know how to do that or I can't or whatever it may be. But anyway, so, so yeah, well, that was a big discussion of a question about serving. <laughs> <to my cats. laughs> it's good though. It's good to know. Well, yeah. Well, like uh, Chris went somewhere. Uh, he plays pinochle with a, 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 some longtime friends for a long time. And I made two of something. I, I can't remember what it is. And he, and he said, oh, hey, I'd love to bring that, you know, oh, over yeah. to that you know, soup the house and everything. I was there. And, you made a soup. Okay. Yes. And then I said, oh, yeah, sure. No, no, feel free. And then I thought about it. I said, you know what? Ask her. Because sometimes as a host, you've got in your mind of what you're preparing and what you're serving. And then when someone goes ahead, oh, I brought this or something, they'll be gracious and accept it, but it kind of um, crimps their style. Like they're like, oh, okay. Yeah. And they have to readjust. So um, I had mentioned that to him and he didn't think it'd be a problem, but he decided, you know, not to do it. And and well, let me <clears throat> let me add a little a good cook. Let me add a little context to the story. So we've been filming uh, recipe videos all day, and the house probably smelled delicious to him. And he, and he tried liked what I made. Soup. He loved it. He goes, "I think this is my next 
favorite meal that you've made or I think it was a soup, made. wasn't it? It was I don't a know soup. what it was. I think it was, I can't remember if it was the sausage soup or the kielbasa. Kielbasa mm. soup. And he goes, oh. oh my gosh. And he just, he was so, he loved it so much and he really wanted to show his friends, look what my wife made for me. I mean, I think well, there was so share. much. He wanted to share because it was so good and he loved it. So mm. yeah, but he ended up not taking it. Because when a host isn't prepared, you know, sometimes they think, oh, you're not going to like what I serve. But anyway, I didn't feel comfortable with him doing it because bless his heart. And he's sitting right over there. <laughs> okay, so you're putting some cream cheese in something here. What do we do? Yeah, I'm uh, okay. The cream cheese. Soften it up a little bit. The onions are making my eyes tear up. So whatever. It's a really easy dish. Just put about four ounces of um, cream cheese in there. And when you're smaller mushrooms, that should be enough. I could have probably went six ounces of the cream cheese for all of these. These big, huge, you know, like, look at this. I mean, if I know they're the giant. Hand, yeah, it's Should a meal. Know, you go to Costco and things are on steroids. You know? <laughs> so I topped up two um, green onions. I think they add a little more flavor than just regular onions. And I, I chopped them up, but I also kind of minced them up too so they're not in big chunks. Let me, uh, where did my garlic go? Hang on. My dog is right here beside me thinking that some good stuff is going to fall on the floor, but I highly doubt that she'll want a um, green onion. So I'm just going to mince up, try and mince up. And if you got one of those garlic presses, that's a good way for mm -hmm. mincing up stuff too. Oops. But, you know, I just pound it with a knife and the skin comes off easy enough. Do you guys like stuffed mushrooms or have you ever made some? Yes, I do both. I love them and I made them. What Me do too. you like to put in them? I just do a basic um, Italian like breadcrumb. Like, oh yeah. That's yeah. it. But you're right. Most of my family doesn't like them either. So mm, they don't like what? They Most of my family don't like them. So I, I oh, stopped yeah. eating them. Yeah. I yeah, make like a up. funny thing about mushrooms. Mm, it's so like funny. when you don't like mushrooms and onions, it's like, okay, that's the basic, maybe not mushrooms for soup or um, mm. anything is, you know, the, the, what, what, what do they call that? The French word, marfa, Mir 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 you know, carrots, celery, and onions. Yep. Mm. The combination of those just adds so much flavor and they begin the base of whatever sauce you guys, you know, you want to make. So anyway, so yeah, I'm just doing, to me, I would probably add three garlic cloves, but these are kind of big. So I'm mm. only going to add two. And like I said, I usually have something already prepared, but oh boy, I didn't. So, um, Oh gosh, I already forgot. Tammy. Yes. Do you like stuffed mushrooms? Have you made them before? I, what, what do you like to I, put in I, them? I, we hosted during COVID, our son was getting married. And so they kept pushing off the wedding. Yeah. So we ended up doing like a small, I have a cousin that's a priest. So he did it. Oh. He did the service at the church with just like immediate family. There's only like 30 of us. Yeah. And we all came back here and I made two great big trays of sausage stuffed mushrooms. And they were oh. like... The biggest hit. Oh, yeah. I'm actually yeah. writing a cookbook of all the family favorite recipes this year for next see, year's Christmas. See? And did you, now, let, let me ask them, you, Tammy. Huh? How did you make up that recipe? What kind of recipes did you did you put in it? And what kind of book did you use? Like, So I tend to make things up. I've always, so I'm one of nine. So I've been cooking since I was 10 years old. Yeah. So, so and I have yeah, so I started cooking for this large family. So I kind of get in a mood and I'm like, okay, this is what I think is going to go good together. Yes. <laughs> but I then you don't write it. Yeah. 
So I wing it, and but then you don't write it down, and then you try to duplicate it, right? So then you're like, oh shit, what did I do? <laughs> exactly. So I did, yeah, hot Italian. I made hot Italian um, sausage stuffed mushrooms and sweet, and I just did it with breadcrumb, Ooh. Italian seasoning butter you know olive yeah. oil garlic onions mm. all sauteed up stuffed them and then just put a little bit of parmesan cheese on each yeah oh my nice folks. yeah yeah, yeah. That sounds good and i think what's good about doing it with mushrooms mushrooms is a it kind of reminds me of eggplant it, it's kind yeah. of like a, a meteor meaty a meaty like vegetable it, it's not wimpy and so it complements yep. a lot of things and sausage is one of them. Or if you aren't into that ground, chicken is good. Like I said, mm -hmm. I made this more seafood because of someone else, but no, that sounds delish. Mm, so good. Um, so I just put two cloves of garlic in there. I'm going to put a little bit of parsley, chop up that. Another thing that people either love it or they hate it is cilantro. Y'all like cilantro? I love it. <laughs> Elizabeth I doesn't. It. I love it too. How about you, Liz? Um, yeah, I do. Yeah, I, it's funny because when I was younger, though, it tasted like soap. And yeah. then when I turned kind of like probably in my twenties, it when it, I actually started to like the flavor. You mean you became? You were learning how to become an adult? Yeah, basically, <laughs> it just changed. You're adulting. It. Yeah, that happened well, to me with green true. vegetables too. Mm -hmm. I hated green vegetables growing up. I hated, and we'd have them every night. We'd have a sit down dinner, and but it wasn't till I was maybe twenty one or twenty two, and it was like, gosh, this broccoli tastes so good. What was I thinking? Or mm -hmm. or even Brussels sprouts. I love them mm -hmm. sautéed now, kind of browned and caramelized with a little bacon, or so good. I think a lot of times it depends on how you grew up. Like for me, I grew up with canned beets. I grew up with yeah. boiling Brussels sprouts. I'm like, ooh. And then when I became an adult, I had roasted Brussels sprouts. And I'm like, right. oh my goodness. Because that's how I was brought up. But I never thought about roasting them until mm -hmm. much later in life. And yeah, I can really like them. The can thing, I think, spoiled it for a lot of kids, at least our age, because that was popular then. Oh, canned green beans or canned peas or. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, totally we bought a lot of frozen and a lot of frozen vegetables is pretty good because it's fresh vegetables that have just been blanched and, you know, dipped frozen. in water, however they process it and frozen. But frozen vegetables. Yeah. But I tell you, I like canned vegetables when we went camping like uh peas a lot better than frozen i don't know why but i just did really yeah i don't know there was something about canned peas so i'm just chopping up some the measurements are on the recipe but i i'm not going to go over the recipe here it's like about a tablespoon or more uh parsley and i did three cans of lump no is it two Maybe I'm two cans. Here. I might do a third here. I've got it all prepped and open. So I'm just going to add in a little bit of hot paprika. Because I like paprika and the hot will just give it a little spice to it. A little pepper here. And I added a little lemon uh, zest and everything. I guess because my I, I automatically go and make assumptions. And it's seafood, so lemon, seafood, made sense to me, I guess. So I do a, just a tad of salt. You don't want too much salt because you're already putting the parma Parmesan cheese in there. And you know what? If you guys haven't done it already, but I think you already have, save the rind. Mm -hmm. Because if you're making soup or sauces and stuff, getting some of that uh, Parmesan um flavoring in it without grated cheese is really good. This is a big rind. So if I ever made anything, I'd probably cut it in half. Because, you know, unless you want the sauce or soup or whatever to taste like Parmesan. 
So I'm just going to grate this. I'm not going to shred it. How much, how much did I say that I needed of this? Oh, about a third a cup, a half a cup. It all works. Yeah. You have a third cup on here. Yeah. One third cup. So I'm just going to do that real quick. But yeah, save the rind. And if you don't want to put it in the freezer because you're not, or the refrigerator because you're not sure, put it in the freezer. It, it'll keep. We but just made my, my mom's here and she's 87. I have her for a week. Mm -hmm. and, oh, wow. Uh, yeah, we just made a big pot of minestrone soup and she's like, all right, go into the freezer, grab the mm -hmm. parmesan. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, yeah. Tammy, I want to continue that conversation. So when you gave this recipe book, did you make a couple of them for your kids? How many kids do you so have? I'm in the process now of writing it for next year's oh, Christmas. Okay. So with my mom here, I'm like, all right, this is these are the recipes I need. So I got to pick her brain. Yes. So I get it all down on paper because the kids are always like, hey, do you know how to make Grammy's um, Parmesan pepper bread? Or do you have Grammy's beef stew recipe? Cause we both do it a little differently and she cooks like my nanny used to cook. And then I ate what she cooked and now I'm tweaking those recipes. So it's like different versions of the same thing. Yeah. So it's kind of interesting to see it evolve, but yeah, so she's Very here. Cool. It's going to be like 75 recipes in this book. So that is if you, awesome. If you can get some video of her, because yeah. I did that with my dad. He traditionally he's full Italian and, he did some meatball recipe and a couple things that we used every year had for Christmas Eve. And yep. I was so thankful. I videotaped that because, you know, he had his little quirks and he'd say, oh, you know, put a little bit, oh, a little bit more, a little <laughs> bit of this, a little, you know, and just his personality. It wasn't just the recipe. It was him, you know, sharing that. Yeah. So that's just my that's two special. cents. special. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like that idea. Like she made beef stew the other day and she's like, it tastes flat. And she put some lemon juice in the beef stew and she's yep. like, now try it. And I was like, that's what I've been missing all this time is it's not in the recipe, Phil. Her name is <laughs> but I, but I tell you, lemon juice or lemon zest, it just brightens up. Yeah. You want a little spark or something to a recipe yep. and it doesn't take a lot. You just need just that little bit. Yep. And it worked awesome. So yeah, that's a really good idea of videotaping her, especially in today's world. You can do that easily. Yeah, yeah. And then I've got some videotape like of my there. mom and dad a little bit, not as much as I wish I, I would have done. Um, but no, I, I think that's very important with all the videos. I mean, I'm older, so I, I'm on social media because I kind of have to. Um, <laughs> but, you know, all these kids take videos and pictures and everything and I'm like these are going to be great later on in life yeah you know? so as I said I'm putting a little lemon zest I put in about a tablespoon or whatever I said of the dill there oh mm -hmm. I would you know quarter I teaspoon think, no I would say a half a teaspoon quarter teaspoon doesn't sound like enough Amy Amy is the chef uh, how do I put it like if she thinks it needs a little more, she's always changing it up. But that's what we do, right? With recipes, yeah. I'm not a stick exactly to the recipe either. But there's a lot of people that are. And so I have made this so many times, but when I actually have to put it on a recipe, and that's why I look at a bunch of recipes because I don't have a sense of what does a half a teaspoon look like? What does a quarter of a cup yeah. look like? I mean, I just do it. And it could be more or less or, you know, whatever. It's instinctive cooking, right? So Pardon? you look, it's instinctive cooking. Yeah. yeah. You instinctively put in what you think and yeah. it's really hard to measure. That's what I'm running into with yeah. these family recipes. It's like, I have to grate it on something and then measure it and then put it in. And I'm like, oh, no, it's not enough. Uh, how do I, how do I now know how much <laughs> I just put in? Totally guessing. <laughs> yeah. And then you have to, you know, start all over and measure <laughs> everything out. And then you realize, did I put more or less? Because it doesn't taste the way I, here, I got to get a bigger fork. So I just combined the crab meat, the cheese, the parsley, the garlic, the onions, the zest. And I did add a little lemon juice, the dill, hot paprika, and oh yeah, and the grated Parmesan. I got to get a better fork to 
maneuver that in. Well, and Amy and I have talked in the past, and this is something we'll probably do after we get uh, her cookbook out. We're working on that. We're in the final stages of a cookbook for her, um, hardback that you'll be able to buy. So that'll be fun. But we always thought about a cooking journal. And again, to put your family recipes in. So you have those. Uh, and I've practiced this last two years, starting with Thanksgiving. And I just bought a little three ring binder you know, to write down exactly how I made it. Because again, yeah, you have a good meal. And then you're like, well, what, how did I do that? What did I put in there? How is that? And I want it to taste like it did last time. So um, I think that's well, awesome. And I Generally. think another reason I wanted to do it too, because a lot of these young people, you know, they, they go out to eat now. They do Uber Eats and yeah, they mm -hmm. might know some basic cooking and stuff. And I'm not sure what they did during COVID. But as they get older, they realize that they want to enjoy some of those traditions. They want to enjoy some of those memories that they might remember as a kid, like what you're doing, Tammy. They, yeah. They're coming to ask, how did grandma, how did, how did you make this and, and yeah. stuff? And I think there comes a time where you want something in print that you can, um, enjoy yourself or with Ooh. friends or when you they start their own family yeah. some of those traditions well even with Liz we were talking last week because we know Liz and yeah. uh, she was talking about cookie traditional cookies that she makes every year and she you know she has a son so at some point he's going to want to know what those recipes are uh just because that brings back all those good memories for yeah. him so yeah good stuff to to share and I think which ones did you say Liz were there some that were your grandmothers or your no I've just recipes? done for a long time where I found a different recipes like I I do the thumbprint cookies mm -hmm. um and kind of rotate what is put in it I've done like uh like an apple cinnamon filling before you know lemon um mm -hmm. berries all that kind of stuff like he asked this year are we going to do those again you know and um eggnog cookies have been Ooh. really big um you know with a really good frosting on it uh that we also do these bars I mean I found this recipe oh like 20 some years ago it's called like can't leave alone bars oh. um so it's like a cook a cake base with a chocolate ganache and you know all this stuff Whoa. it's they're really good yeah wow so those are like I basic put ones on we always do that recipe I yeah. know. <laughs> just breathing it yeah right <laughs> yeah yeah I mean, well that's why you know when i'm in a rush i sometimes forget i was looking at this mixture here of cream cheese and all the other ingredients i'm like well this isn't going to fill up all those mushrooms because i forgot to add the crab meat i mean go figure <laughs> oh my goodness yeah we do a cookie day here every year i used to do cookies with all my nieces and nephews and now that I have grandchildren I have the younger nieces and nephews oh. with my own grandchildren and we do it we do it the whole day and then wow all the cookies we make like 12 different kinds I think last year and then mm -hmm. they put they decorate and then they put together their own platter and we wrap it all up and put a card on it and that's their gift to their parents oh. now how old are your grandkids that's they are three, awesome. two, and one. But oh, then I, yeah, that's right. My sister's, um, my sister passed away. Yeah, three years ago, right. and I oh, agreed to sorry. be their grandma. So they are ten and seven. Okay. So I have all five of the kids come, and we just and the and the the little ones bring their mom or dad, and we just do it, and it's just oh. a fun, fun day. Yeah, wow, that done... sounds really fun. I've done Usually. like my cookie thing since before my son was in uh, kindergarten. So I started yeah. this tradition. And what we've done is every year we make platters and we give to police and firemen in oh, the area. Nice. And every year, I mean, now he's, you know, 21. It's grown. Like we make a lot of cookies and it's grown for sure. Um, and now he invites friends over here to help with the cookie thing. And then they all deliver. And without fail, every single year, one of the fire stations invites them back in and they get to go do a tour and on the truck. And no matter oh. how old they are, they still get to do it. So it's fun. So no, fun. That's great. But I also think it creates service, you know, mm -hmm. giving back and doing something for someone else. 
you know, mm -hmm. amongst the kids, which, you know, we all appreciate people who do things, but to actually do something mm -hmm. for that. My first thinking to that, Liz, because, you know, when my kids were in school, you could use your kitchen and make a lot of stuff. Exactly. But now you can. And I was so bummed, but I totally get it with a lot of kids having allergies or, you know, teachers don't know what you're doing in your kitchen and stuff like that. So for health concerns, but that's great that you're yeah. able to do that and the firemen's, you know, accept it. So yeah, I'm just awesome. using this small little spoon and just stuffing the mushrooms. I like these small little spoons because they're a lot better than a, using a teaspoon. They're kind of like little appetizer spoons. But yeah, I just overstuff it and whatever. But like I said, these are huge mushrooms. <laughs> but er everyone liked them last night. I tried it with the Kremni, you know, the little brown mushrooms. But today I'm just using the regular white mushrooms. Have you done it with the mini portobello? Um, no, but they this would work perfect for that as well. I've I've never seen the mini ones. Me, I think they have thing. them at Costco. Do they? Oh, yeah, I just saw them. Well, so that's why I was asking because I was like, oh, they're about the same size. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Well, these aren't are just... mini and portobellos the same mushroom? Or am I wrong? I think they're different. They're, are they different? For some reason I thought they were the same. I, I would have to look that up, but I, I think yeah. they're different. Yeah. Oh, who else is talking? I wasn't sure. Um, anyway, I've got some left over. It's because I didn't use up all the mushrooms. But because of time, I just thought I'd do this. I'm gonna get some panko crumbs and melted butter. Sorry. I don't know if that's her TV or Chris is probably watching TV. No, he's on. No, no, he's on his computer. Oh, it, I think it's mine because my husband's watching TV. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I always blame it on Chris. <laughs> um, Tammy, where are you from? You're at, you sound like you're from Northern. Oh, Massachusetts. Yes, I thought. <laughs> Is Tammy from Massachusetts? I am, yeah. yeah. Uh, Elizabeth, where are you from? Oregon. Oh, no. I'm. It's Liz. It's Liz. But on my Zoom, it just comes up Elizabeth. So it's the, I'm the same person. <laughs> oh, I know. But isn't the other person Elizabeth? Or am Justine. I wrong? Justine. Justine. Oh, my gosh. See, Amy, Amy has her computer way back. So she yeah. can't read the names under your pictures. That's why she's confused. And she had a rough party weekend. So she's kind of on the, <laughs> and I had glasses on too. I mean, go figure. But she can never see the names because she has her computer so far back. Yeah. And I'm sorry, my dog, I don't know what it is today. She just wants to sit on my lap. So <laughs> I'm just letting her hang out. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there was a question. Oh, I, I ask another question. Anything else you guys want to ask? When you, when you ask me to ask a question, I can't. <laughs> you don't have to ask a question. We can talk about anything as well. You know, I like using panko breadcrumbs because to me, they give a little more of a crunch than mm. regular breadcrumbs, but regular breadcrumbs will work as well you know hmm. so we're gonna so, stick this in the oven 375 and i don't know because these were bigger mushrooms they probably went like for 25 minutes just to get the crab meat stuffing mixed you know heated through and baked and the cheese melted as well as you know kind of softening up and cooking the mushrooms so amy yeah so you're melting the butter and the when are you going to put that those on like over the top when they're done no i um i have melted butter i'll mix that in with the breadcrumbs okay and i just add just a little hint of salt to this not okay. a lot um okay. just to give the breadcrumbs you know just a little flavor instead of just this flat crunchy topping oh it's a and topping I'll okay that, i'll just put that on the mushrooms and then i'll bake it 
Got and then it, if you got it. And after you bake it, if your if, if the breadcrumb topping doesn't have that little toasty look to it, watch it though. Cause believe me, I have destroyed so many things. Put in something on broil. Oh yeah, I'll go over here and do something for a minute. Well, the no. minute now turns into five and I open up the oven and I'm like, oh brothers. <laughs> I do it all the time. Well, I, well, one thing I'd like to ask you, because I, and I've mentioned this a lot of times, I didn't have family here, meaning my grandmother, you know, my aunts and my sister and their kids and my kids having cousins and stuff like that. So Easter, I always had the honey baked ham because that's kind of what I grew up with. We always had ham. Mm -hmm. Christmas was iffy. We would have a very good beef prime rib tenderloin or something beef. Or we would also have turkey again, like we did for Thanksgiving. Is there a traditional like Christmas dinner that any of you guys have? Mine's prime rib. Is we it? always go prime rib Christmas Day. Yep. Did, mm. uh, like this year, I hosted um, 28 people. So my turkey this year was 33 pounds. Oh, my wow. God. Wow. I am not. Wow. It was bigger than my grandson. <laughs> oh, my Lord. <laughs> So, so I was turkeyed out by the end of Thanksgiving and then, but Christmas day, it's always prime rib. And then mm. um, Easter is always ham. It's always yeah. ham. Um, you must have a lot of family near you then. You're, you're, yeah, you, I do you're... eight brothers and sisters. Yeah. And then I have 27 nieces and nephews. Wow. And, and children. So yeah, there's a lot of us. So I usually host upwards of 52 people for Thanksgiving, but COVID really changed everybody's yeah. Yeah. path and not everybody's comfortable anymore. So we've kind of cut it back. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Isn't that kind of sad? That sucks. It really does. Mm -hmm. So all I'm doing is just putting the bread breadcrumbs on top and I press them down a little bit so it'll stick to the cream cheese. But I think everyone liked these. It's funny because I had some leftover crab meat dip that I brought over too. And I think everyone liked that as well. So I'm just going to quickly do this. Get them in the oven so you guys can at least look at it. But this is You're making me not hungry. A complicated appetizers, but... I don't think appetizers should be that complicated because you're already doing so much work to cook the main dinner. It's just something to tie people over, have, enjoy the conversation and, you know, stuff like that. Unless you're having, you know, like an appetizer get together with friends or something, then, you know, make it a little more complicated. I yeah. love bruschetta or crostini or, or crostata or whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, the little bread pieces. I love that kind of stuff. I love endive, you know, for it too. So this is going to go into the oven at 375. Ooh. I'm going to say about 20 minutes. So we'll see if we get this done before. So Liz, does your, son, leave? Do you, does your son like uh, mushrooms? Oh yeah, we like mushrooms, onions, garlic. Oh, yeah, I mean, I actually have mushrooms in the fridge right now. I was like, oh, it's about half a container of Costco ones. Maybe I should use that to make these. Yes. Well, you know what, Liz, you said. Um, did you mention what type of cookie do you like to make during the holidays? Me? Yeah, Liz. Um. Well, uh, like, do you say cookies? Yeah, did yeah, you make switch it with your son? <laughs> oh, yeah, we do. I mean, thumbprints. Oh, the, the thumbprint one, yes. Yeah, the can't leave alone, the eggnog cookies. Okay. Uh, a lot of fudge. <laughs> yeah. So, Liz, tell us about when you put the jam in the thumbprint. Because Amy made some delicious cookies Saturday night, but the jam rolled out of it while it was cooking. Well, the, the problem I had with that is that when I, because I was in a rush, you know, you, I, I was up at seven getting prepared for this big Christmas open house that Chris and I had on Saturday. 
we're going to kind of make that our tradition, which we had a great time. Yeah, but when you create an open house, it's like you got to have a variety of food because it's not like I ask people to bring stuff because some of them may be here for a half hour, a couple hours, whatever. So I made these thumbprints. But when I opened up the jam, I thought, no, this is not the right jam. It's too loosey. It's too loose. Mm -hmm. And um, but I did it anyway, hoping and stuff. But because it was already a little watery, it, you know, went all over the cookie and stuff. And I thought the presentation doesn't look good. So I did not serve it. But then yeah. when I had it a little bit later. I'm like, oh my gosh, these are really, really good. Because yeah. When the jam ran over and kind of cooked on the parchment. It kind of reminded me of fruit leather, you know, type of thing. <laughs> So oh, good. <laughs> I think it's got to be thicker jam that you really got to stir up and you, stuff. Yeah, usually it. I use like a curd or a preserve. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, Tammy, what kind of mm -hmm. cookies do you like cooking with your grandkids? I or love doing French bread. I have a I have a recipe from a old French woman up on the Canadian border. Um, she was a neighbor that I grew up next to. And luckily this woman could cook and she gave me every recipe. So there's wow. this particular gingerbread recipe okay. that I made that is super gingery. There's a little clove in there. Ooh. It's just like, it's like literally Christmas in a cookie for me. Yeah. And it's got like a um, confectionery sugar um, frosting. Okay. And is so good. Those are probably my favorite. Mm -hmm. And I get gingerbread and what else? It's like it's got it's got ginger, a little bit of clove, allspice. Yeah, it's so good. It's a gingerbread cookie, but good. it's delicious. Mm. Um, but it sounded like you had another cookie that's one of your favorites too, or no? No, I make those, and then I love to make um the what we call a Mexican wedding cake cookie. Yeah, like it's the like, snowballs. I call no, them snowballs. Yeah, they're snowballs. Yeah, snowball. yeah, I make those. Yeah. But we make 12, mm. I think last year was 12 different types of cookies. Wow. So wow. each year we expand a little bit, but I try to make a lot of the cookies prior to, and that way they're just picking off the platters because getting young kids to roll out cookie <laughs> dough and decorate yeah. like herding cats. Yeah. So but it's the quick. same for 20 year olds too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, some people just don't have the patience or the interest in it because yeah. it is a process. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. So I try to do a lot beforehand, but we, we have a really good time. Now, do you make the gingerbread looking like gingerbread or are they round? No, I make them looking like I'd make gingerbread men and women. Okay. So, yeah. so do you do the little decorative little frosting? Oh, yeah. and, okay. It gets interesting. Listen, I'm not a professional, oh, yeah. <laughs> but they taste really, really good. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. and Justine, Justine well, yeah. well, what is your favorite cookie? Or do you bake uh, Well, the or... favorite one in the favorite one in the house is the uh, peanut butter blossom. Oh yes, we, we made. I knew we made dozens of them yesterday, and uh, yeah. yeah, they're almost all gone. <laughs> oh yeah, is that with yeah. the Hershey kiss in the middle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I tell you, I would rather have a peanut butter blossom over a Reese's candy. Yeah, yeah me too. Because I love peanut butter, and basically, who really doesn't like chocolate? I mean, yeah, most right. people do, but anyway, but yeah, those are really, really good. And I have to say this year I made, um, I'm piggybacking on Tammy. I made a citrus gingerbread cookie and it was Ooh. so good. Just have a hint of lemon and orange in there. It was so good. I, I was really? like, this is a keeper. <laughs> wow. And I also make a peanut butter stuffed cookie. It's like two peanut butter cookies with like a peanut butter filling. And then you dip half the cookie in chocolate. Wow. Oh my God. <laughs> It's, it's to die for my son oh. that. He doesn't want that for a birthday cake he's gonna he just turned 30 he's like mom make me a platter yeah. of the so wow. um do you put peanut butter in the center yeah so it's like a peanut butter mix so it's it's peanut butter it's it's a little bit of sugar I forget what the uh, the liquid is to thin it out a little bit. I'd have to pull the recipe, but you basically make two um, peanut butter cookies yep. and then you cool them and you put this like filling in there, sandwich them, then dip them in the melted chocolate and put okay. them on parchment. 
And I got to oh tell you. Okay, so ah. it's mainly like a peanut butter sandwich cookie dipped in chocolate. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was like stuffed where you'd have to make sure you pinch it. No, no. Peanut. Okay, no. got it. Yeah. Oh, it sounds so good. It sounds so good. One of my I'm favorite, hungry, um, you guys. <laughs> one of my favorite cookies from the Girl Scouts is the peanut butter patties. Yeah. You know, because I love the peanut butter and the, you know, the little peanut mm -hmm. butter thing in there. No, that sounds really, really good. I might have to give that a try. Unfortunately, yeah. Chris doesn't like peanut butter. I'm like, what do you mean you don't like peanut butter? How can you not yeah. grow up in peanut butter? Well, unless I'm you allergic. have a peanut butter allergy. Yeah, I'm allergic to peanut butter and nuts. Yeah. So I use almond uh, butter. Oh yeah, you're oh, allergic to peanuts. So Liam? I like I do the peanut butter, you know, blossoms, the basic ones, but instead I just substitute almond butter, and I add more idea. um like cinnamon to it because oh. cinnamon or not cinnamon uh, or yeah actually cinnamon because it helps bring out the almond flavor. <laughs> um, so that's how I do it. Mm. Are you allergic you to peanuts, Liz? I just am. To share okay. recipes or anything with each other. I'm sorry. What? Is there an avenue for us to share recipes with each other? Like as we're talking, I'm like, oh, I think I want that recipe. Oh, no, of, I want course, of course. Um, okay. it, it, I think all we need to do is get the okay from, you know, you all to be able to share your emails, yeah. Yeah. you know, with each other. And yeah, I would love to be copied yeah. on it. I want to hear yeah. some of those recipes too. So Lisa, maybe connecting. Yeah. You know, everyone. If you if email you, me, email me at arlittlekitchen at gmail.com. And she will share your guys' email because yeah, I, I just want to make it very clear. We don't share anybody's emails with anybody. Yeah. Advertising or anything. It's just for Amy Roloff's Little Kitchen purposes. But because you asked, if we get the verbal from you guys just to share it with you guys, then we will do that. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. You know? So you do prime rib. Any mm -hmm. special way you do your prime rib, Tammy? I always bring it to room temp. And then, the well, the night before, I herb encrust it. And then I put it in the fridge uncovered. Yeah. And then I pull it out, bring it to room temp. And then it's really high, high heat for the first 20 minutes, turn it down. And then I shut it off and I let it set in that oven. Yeah. And I pull it out and it's usually, yeah. you know, medium. Mm. I don't do medium rare. My daughter would still eat it moving, not me. me <laughs> no, um, I, I wouldn't go that far. Yeah, <laughs> I would. I like a good medium. Um, but then I do like a mushroom casserole, like a lot of the, it's a lot of the side dishes that I only make for that particular day what are some of the side dishes so i do a mushroom casserole i do what my kids call um cheesy potato deliciousness oh yeah <laughs> yeah which is basically mashed potatoes it's like a take on hash brown potatoes or like you know breakfast potatoes but yeah. in a casserole because i can yeah. do it in advance mm -hmm. so i make mashed potatoes and then i add chopped up bacon chopped up onion a little garlic put that mm. in a pan and I top it with um, a couple of different cheeses and then I bake it off. I would call uh -huh. that a glorified baked potato. It's <laughs> just like, um, and then just, you know, I do a glazed carrot usually cause I, mm. I'm a big carrot fan. Um, and then for dessert, it's usually something I find on the internet that's new because we oh. get like cooked out, you know, yeah. dessert mm -hmm. out from all the parties. Yeah. So I just want something new. Yeah. What are you going to do this year? Eggnog pie. Okay. You are not. I was just going to ask, uh, has anyone ever made one before? Because I want to make one. But yeah. I have extra gingerbread. So I was thinking about making a gingerbread crust. Yes. Ooh. Like a regular pie crust. That sounds yeah. very good. All right. Now I have to make it. So, <laughs> oh. so Justine, I was going to go to you. Do you, have you made eggnog pie before? No, okay. I, yeah, so this is going to be interesting. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so that's cool. awesome. I'd like to see how eggnog pie would taste compared to drinking eggnog. I do not like eggnog. It oh, is like, I love it. it's like drinking, I, I don't know. I, I just have never liked eggnog. I love it. But maybe an eggnog pie, you know, is a I'm different just doing it. That. Yeah, I'm just doing it with, I think, I'm just going to do it with um pudding. Like mix that's it. That's what I'm doing. The pudding. Yeah, that's what you're going to do. Oh, too. Yeah. And I think what's going to really make it different, a little different, is with the gingerbread pie crust. The gingerbread yeah. that I made with the citrus, I'm just going to try to figure something out with that. Mm. 
So what are you making for Christmas dinner, Justine? I take the easy way out and I do Italian. So everything is done ahead of time. We're in our jammies all day long and that's it. I do very, very, very casual <laughs> yeah. on, on Christmas day. Cause I am done by then totally. Yeah. 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 I think with me not having family or anything around, I, I didn't want the kids to think these holidays that are important to me, like Easter, Thanksgiving and Christmas and whatever else. Um, as just an ordinary day. So right. I would still get dressed up, you know, when we'd have dinner, I try to anyway, I'd, you know, wear my apron and everything. I would have the ham as if I was having a lot of people over, but of course, like Thanksgiving, I wouldn't have the stuffing and the mashed potatoes and the sweet potatoes, you know, yeah. I would just do what we like, but, um, but, uh, yeah, it's so fun to hear your guys' story when you have that family around and, you constantly are sharing, you know, history and traditions yeah. and what you're doing now to create at least one new tradition because it's your family and stuff. I, um, I think the older I get, I miss not having that. Cause I always tell people I was, I, I love my home state, Michigan. I love it. I, I don't, I say that all the time, Lisa. Oh yeah. Yeah. People are like, okay, Amy. All right. All right. Um, but I tell people I was never an adult in Michigan. So I don't have that necessarily adult relationship, you know, when I was out here with my kids growing up with my family, you know, you go out for a visit, but that's not the same. Not the same. And so when my mom passed away, it's one of the things that I really, really miss. And my dad will be 94 and I'm going to visit him in January, but still it's like, you can never play catch up. Okay, can, can we just rehash the last 30 years? Tell me what you would tell me, dad, you know, or or something like that. But I, I so I love hearing your guys' story when you guys have uh, beyond just your immediate family, your extended family, like cousins and sisters and brothers and grandparents and aunts and uncles. I, I, I'm i in awe of that. Tell you the truth. Well, thank you. You know, uh, oh. Amy, I took my dad around his old neighborhood where he grew up. Yeah. And I drove around and took video of him saying, this is where the yeah. the meat market was. This is yeah. what we used to do. I used to deliver meat for this company. And yeah. now it's so that was kind of a fun thing to, again, as a memory to be able to pull that up, like even drive by your neighborhood and maybe you'll learn things from. Oh, your dad. yeah, I, I got I stopped by my own old, old stomping grounds all the time. And when my uh, my father and my mom and dad live in what we called the cottage, my grandfather's cottage, but he, they went down to Florida during the winter time. So this was more or less their summer home. My parents, you know, tore that home down and built a house because they lived there all year long. So they needed a warmer house in the winter. <laughs> and, um, but even though they left the home that I grew up in, this place still has a lot of memories because we spent a lot of summers there because they live off of a lake. So we'd go fishing and swimming and We'd hike around there, go bike riding, you know, all that other stuff. So, but you're right. It's, it's, I, I, yeah, I wish I would have done that, you know, long time ago. I, so for, for me, my kids are thir 31, 30 and 24 and two of them have their fam, their own families. And one of the difficulties that we've kind of come up against is mm -hmm. how to allow them to start their own traditions. Right. And how mm -hmm. do you respect that line? but still feel fulfilled during the holidays. So mm -hmm. I try to be the mother-in-law that, cause they, they each independently have issues with, no, you need to spend this kind of time or I haven't seen the kids in this long and I don't do any of that. I always say mm -hmm. I'm doing my Easter or I'm doing Christmas, whatever it is, I'm doing dinner. Let me know if you can come. And I think, and I, and I'm curious if anybody else has had that, fine line where you're like you want to spend the time but you don't want to infringe Amy's on like that. I think um for family for them yeah. to do what they want to do too and respect that boundary I think um I I think I'm just now beginning to get into that because mm -hmm. unfortunately my kids have to deal with divorced parents yeah so you know spending time hang on I'm going to check on my mushrooms with this set <laughs> oh no they they need a little more um so 
you know, they want, you know, maybe spend some time with their dad if that works out and then their mom and then they have their spouses in laws and they have a lot more friends in the area. See, I, I just never had that. And so what I've told them, but I think starting next year, I'm going to be like, this is what I'm having. I'd love for you all to come over on this day, mm -hmm. but I don't not want to spend time with them. So I told them, you know, before I don't mind doing a Christmas dinner before Christmas so that you can spend it with your own family or your in-laws or something like that. But I also don't want to have just one dinner for one kid and another dinner for another kid and another dinner for another kid. So um, this year will be a little different. But next year, I'm going to say I'm having Christmas dinner here on this day. And it might be like two days prior to Christmas Day. Uh, because Christmas Eve, all my kids like to go to Christmas Eve service and, you know, having all the kids. So I don't know. I got to work on that. But I, I hear you there because I don't want to be the one to put that added pressure. Yeah. To kind of they want their own family time and then they have to have their spouses and all those cousins and stuff. And then they have their own family and do all of that. It's a lot. I can understand yeah where people say, oh, it's so stressful over the holidays, pressure, you know, what yeah, do I wants. give? And I remember growing up that, you know, we, I'd have my aunts and my cousins and everything, but for Christmas gift giving amongst that whole big family, we would draw names. Yeah. And we would get, so everyone got a gift, but the pressure of trying to get something for everybody, you know, was minimized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree with you guys. Um, I decided that I wasn't going to pressure because they're dealing with some divorce things and stuff too. So I, it doesn't have to be celebrated on the day. It yeah, can be yeah. celebrated. Like you said, um, Amy, like I'll do it like this weekend, we just celebrate it with my older son. So we all got yeah. together. Um, and then on next weekend, we'll do it with the, who's ever lives by me. Yeah. Um, I agree. It's about spending time together. It's not about like, you know, Oh, it has to be this time, this, you know, yeah. Yeah. and all that you know it's just and so it's still close to christmas though too because you're still yeah. in the christmas spirit yeah, right like my father's birthday is january 1st so i grew up with never taking the christmas decorations down until after mm -hmm. his birthday and and i you know did that with or do you have to leave can you say hi to everybody chris is doing his own christmas thing and handing out hi. Going hi, chris. To his friends hi, chris. and everything yep. to hand out calendars cards and stuff like that so yeah well she's done the stuffed mushrooms for me twice both times big hit yeah so so you like them yeah, i'm yeah. hoping there'll be some left over by the time i get <laughs> home today <laughs> okay okay see i'll see you later bye, bye chris bye. um he is so gracious and he'll um after i do a cooking video if he's around or able to or to, to his word if he's taking a shower you know so he looks nice um, he'll do, you know, taste or he'll taste it with me and stuff. So I'm very grateful for that, that he does that. But yeah, I, I think, I don't know. There just seems to be so many other elements that are pulling, not maybe ourselves mm. as well. I mean, um, Tammy, you got a big family around you. I mean, bless your heart. Yeah. And, mm. um, you know, I'm stressing over seven grandkids. It's like the third kid of one of my kids. It's like, you're playing with half your kid's toys, but I don't want the yeah. third kid to grow up like nothing was given just for him either. And mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my gosh. So I oh, think I know. so many stress factors in our kids' lives. It just feels like more than what, what I grew up with or raising my kids, but I'm sure my parents thought the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. think that they just pressure from their other in-laws of we want you we need you know yeah. you should be here and then the guilt that goes on them so I'm like polar opposite so like for yeah. Thanksgiving I do it if you come you come for Christmas yeah. I always say you know what if you guys want to pick a day we can all get together so what they initiated was each year there's four of us so three kids and then us we alternate houses oh yeah and we a day that works for each one of us and we all get together and that's our Christmas. But Easter and the other holidays, it's like, okay, guys, if you want to come, come. If you can't, yeah. you can't. Yeah. I just don't want to be that wet blanket. I know. That's creating more tension 
with these young families because it's hard enough to be married and have young babies. And I just, I'm like, how do other people deal with this? Am I doing the right thing by being like hands off? Like, no, I don't care. No, you know, I'm, I don't think that I don't care. Yeah. I think Justine and I, I, I would totally agree with you because right. I don't want that thought and image always coming into their mind during mm -hmm. a holiday that I enjoy and it means a lot to me. And I also want them to appreciate this holiday too. And to be that other in-law or mother to, you know, so they've got all these people pulling yeah. at them. They end up saying, you know what, we're just spending it by ourselves. You're right. Yeah. And I, I still want to celebrate that holiday. And like Justine, you know, you did it a week prior, or a couple of days before. Yeah. To me, it's, it's it, like you said, Justine, it's about gathering with your family and enjoying the Christmas holiday. It's still Christmas. And the one thing we should probably emphasize more too is like, we're doing all of this for Christmas, but let's be in that Christmas spirit all year yeah. long. I know, I know. You know, so yeah, but anyway. So any, any, uh, any other questions or anything? Oh, hi. Hi, hi Carrie. Carrie. I think you're, you're on, on mute. mute. Unmute. Trying. Oh, there, <laughs> there you go. Yes. There we are. <laughs> yeah, well, thanks for joining us. We were just talking about traditions, Christmas dinner, the holidays, uh, you know, Tammy and I, and I think, Justine, are you a grandmother? Yes, I am. Yeah. Um, you know, we all love being a grandmother, but how do you celebrate when your kids have other in-laws to go visit and stuff? So we, we've been just sharing about that. That's good. I don't have any grandchildren and I won't have any. Okay. And why is that? My daughter passed away. Oh, I'm oh, so sorry. So, sorry. so, so um, how long ago? Five years ago. Oh, wow. That, that, that is a tough one. Was she your only child? Yes. Yeah. That's a tough one. Yeah. Um, so what do you do during the Christmas holidays or any holiday really? Now it's just my husband and I, so we just, I just cook and we stay home. Yeah. Do our, yeah. Thing, our families don't live near us. Okay. Okay. You know, we're in Texas. Wait, they're in Arizona. Huh? Where do you live? Texas. Okay. Okay. My and dad lives in Texas, but they do stuff with her, his girlfriend's family. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That, uh, that, that's a tough one because sometimes uh, the older we get, we're like, boy, should we go through the hassle of, you know, making something special just for the two of us? And in my opinion, it's like, yes, because even though we don't have the family that we had hoped for or they're far away or whatever it may be, I always contend, yes, because this is a holiday and we're important. Yes. And just sharing and reliving the traditions, you know, that we had together or our family and stuff, I think is, you know, still important. So I'm glad you guys at least, you know, do that. Yeah, we do. We still do. You know, it's just, it's a little bit harder because Christmas was all about her, even though she was an adult. Yeah, it was still all about her. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But now it's just we decorate, we I we do the dinner and all that stuff. So yeah. We do things we had to the first year we didn't do that, but yeah. I'm sure it was very hard. Oh yeah. 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 My sister yeah. passed away, I think, what is it, 17 or so five? I think 2016. Boy, I should know that. It's been a while. But, you know, to have one of your siblings pass away. And of course, I felt for my mom and dad because never would they expect that one of their kids right. would be, or, you know, they would. And, um, but, you know, they have other kids and stuff. But of course, we're all far away. And I chose never to go home during the holidays because we're having bad weather here on the 23rd and the 24th, I think, or the 22nd or something like that. And across at Massachusetts, across the country, mm -hmm. no airports, the flights canceled. And, and I thought, oh, I cannot see myself doing that with four kids. So I'd always go home during the summer. I, Michigan is my home state. Yeah. And, um, so, but you know, I feel for my, I'm glad my sister lives there so that my dad has still has somewhere to go. Right. You know, cause my, That's mom, good. Passed my mom passed away in 2019, but I remember. 
Yeah. My so, mom's been gone several years and my sister's yeah. been gone several years. Yeah, that's so that, just my brother and I. And um, the older I get, I mean, I'm just 60, but the older I get, I thought, man, and you don't want to go what it should have could have because that's a bad place to be in. Right. I still wish I would have individually spent a little more time with each individual kid. Yeah. Of course, Tammy, your parents could probably never do that with eight kids. Nine. <laughs> um, nine kids. Uh, yeah, nine, nine kids. And so, I mean, oh boy. Uh, but, you know, but then I thought, no, you know, you, we did what we did at the time because that felt right or right. whatever yeah. it was. And like right now, uh, we were talking about, you know, I'm divorced, uh, Justine's divorced. And you're not, Tammy, no. I, I was. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, that's I have right. a You're with yeah. your uh, second husband for a much yeah. longer time, which is great. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, we're, you, you just do it when you can and make those traditions when you can. And, you know, we were just talking about not creating that stress for our kids. Because right. you know, they want maybe spend time with their dad and then me and then their other in-laws. I'm like, you know what? If it falls anywhere in between this week, I'm good. Pick a day. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yep. We've been married 41 years. Oh, that congratulations. Is awesome. Yeah, congrats. <laughs> Little while. Yeah. My parents would have been married 67 years, but my wow. mom passed away about a week and a half shy of that. Right. So I'm just going to say they were married 67 years, but that's right. And, and they had a roller coaster. I remember growing I up. I think we all parents, do. <laughs> we yeah, have a roller coaster. Parents would, would get a divorce, but they, uh, they hung in there and they, to the day, to the very last day that my mom was alive, she, she would still call my, my dad, her best friend. And my right. dad mm -hmm. still does the same too. My dad has a, um, we go over the house. And he has a place setting for her as if she's there, you know, oh. like he's eating. And like when we, my brother and I are going out there in January and he will, um, that place setting will still be there. You know, we'll move it or, but it'll still be there as if my mom is there. I've never seen more pictures of my mom around since she passed away because it's one of those things how we take for granted certain things because they're around us all the time until they're not. So, right. yeah. But my in law married 69 years, and my father in law died four months before their 70th. Oh, we're gonna yeah. call it they were married 70 years because they were yeah, in their exactly. 70. Yeah, yeah exactly. she's still going strong. She's 96, and wow. she's bossing everybody around in that nursing home. We just put her in there <laughs> yeah. eight months ago. She's literally like the Gestapo. If anybody <laughs> wants anything or needs anything done, they go see Teresa. Yeah, <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. yeah, she's she is something else. She was one of 22 children. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. That poor French mother. Catholics. <laughs> French Catholics. <laughs> I was going to say, it had to be the Catholic family. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so true. I think Amy's checking on her mushrooms. Yeah. Yep. Sorry about that. Yeah. Much um, longer. Have you ever made stuffed mushrooms? No. No? Uh, no? Would you ever? Do you like mushrooms? Oh, yeah. My husband doesn't, though. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> then I probably wouldn't bother too much with it either. Right. And um, I mean, you can still make some for yourself, but still right. it's those things where, you know, like Chris doesn't, well, oh, he, Chris doesn't like any vegetables. No. <laughs> he may eat green beans. And I'm like, Okay, you go to the farmer's market during the summer, you know, all of these fresh vegetables and everything. And I just grow an herb garden in our little yard in the neighborhood. But I'm like, you don't like fresh vegetables? I mean, he'll eat a tomato, like a fresh tomato. He likes tomatoes, maybe green beans, but that's it. Broccoli, he'll eat one because he feels like he has to. Maybe it was <laughs> drained, you know, ingrained in him. Oh, but he likes green beans. Yes. Yes. Well, um, yeah. Mushrooms. Yeah. Yeah. And mushrooms. We made um, one of the recipes. We, we record once a month. We bring in a little camera crew and do some recipes so we can post later. And Amy made, what was it? Lemon. Oh, feta. lemon feta green beans. 
Oh, and they were so it was good. it was just a, a very simple but a little different take on green beans because you know um you know green beans can be I mean do anything with green beans but anyway I uh grilled or sauteed the lemons and I tell you that is a game changer in itself mm -hmm. it just changes that lemony flavor it doesn't make it so tart but it, yeah. it caramelizes them yes caramelizes yeah. it and so I did that. I sauteed some shallots and just with a little butter. And so I just drizzled the shallots and the butter over it. And I, uh, uh, no, I, I sauteed the shallots, put in the feta. First of all, I did the lemon. Then I cooked the green beans first because you got to parboil them. Mix the green beans in that. And then the feta melts a little bit. So, so good. and then I just sprinkled it with a combination, I think parsley and chives as a little garnish. But with the warm feta, the, the warm juice from the caramelized onion, the shallots, I don't know. It was so good. Yeah, yeah, it was good. I'm like, how, why haven't so I come good. up with this combo before? I mean, I know, was, I know. It, it was I oh, something like that. I, I put I, it on I, broil. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just one more little minute. What'd you I say, Tammy? I do that with chicken. So I take chicken breast and I put it a little bit of salt and pepper, olive oil, and a little bit of oregano and put it in the oven. And like 10 minutes before it's done, I put a handful of spinach mm -hmm. and then chopped up tomato and then a handful of feta. Mm -hmm. And it just, it is mm. so good. Yeah. Mm. And the feta with a little squeeze of lemon over the top. Oh my God. It's one of my favorite summer um, dinners. That so it's kind of like a sheet pan. You cook the chicken first. Yeah. And you get in the, and enough of the juices and everything sautés the uh, spinach, yep. but also kind of roasting or putting the tomatoes that burst yep. of the tomato is so good. Yeah, that, yeah. So good. That is, have you guys ever done that um, feta cheese hack that was going around on TikTok? Yeah. 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 yeah I didn't do that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's a phase. It's a fad. Okay, so here they are, people. Oh, yum. yum. Now, I can't bite into it right now because the cheese will probably burn my mouth, you know? So I'll wait till it cools down. Okay, we talked about the holiday. Uh, we talked about, I guess, gift giving, I suppose. Uh, dinner. Uh, what do you... Um, I'm sorry, I can't remember your name because you just came on. Carrie. Carrie, yeah. Carrie, Carrie. Carrie, what are you going to cook for you and your husband? He wants ham. Oh, okay. Will and, you like order it or just go to the grocery store? Or how do you I'll make go it? I'll go to the grocery ham? store and buy it. Okay. And I'll do it myself. Usually it's some brown sugar and some pineapple, but we use Splenda because diabetics. Okay. So, and it bakes, we, I bake with it. It works very well for people who can't use it. You can't tell. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, that's excellent. Yeah. yeah. What, what kind of side dishes would you have with it? We'll do yams. Okay. And we're a little tired of green bean casserole. So <laughs> we'll have like probably corn or something like that in a salad. Okay. Yeah. And I'm sorry, you probably mentioned it, but I cannot remember. Carrie, where are you from? Where do you? Oh, Texas. I'm from Texas. Yeah, Texas. Okay, that good Southern, that good Southern food. Yeah. Well, I'm oh, actually uh, a Californian. And oh, then, oh, yeah. What made you move to Texas? My dad lives out here. Okay. Okay. Great. So we came out here for that. Yeah. Are you going to have any dessert? I'll think of something that's sugar free. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll probably so, make some sugar-free chocolate chip cookies. Oh, he likes those. So have you had to change your cooking over the years when you and your husband or whoever became a diabetic? Yes. Okay. You just look That's for stuff that, and you change your sourdough bread is the bread that has the least, least amount of sugar in it. Yeah. So we use sourdough bread. Okay. Well, so you just change bread. by reading labels. Yeah, yeah. No, that's still good bread, though. That's excellent bread. Yeah. Well, that's excellent. Great. Well, I'm going to let these cool down for a little bit because, I don't know, everyone wants me to taste them for some Those reason. look good. Yes, Ooh, I want okay. you to taste them. Yeah. I mean, they're in half. 
and I love, um, cool. I don't know. I love the different take of seafood mm. instead of the more traditional. Um, well, let me see. I don't know. They might squish because they're so warm if I cut it in half. But um, any other questions, you guys? We only have two more episodes left of this crazy season. I can't even believe it. The years I've been doing this show, I think this is, I think it's only two episodes left. I think it's this week and next week. And then this season is over. Um, I mean, I've been doing this since about 2004. I think this is season 24 or 25. And if we do do one more, that might be 26. So we're scheduled to film some more, but you know, with a network, you never know. Right. You never know from season to season. And, and as you know, Zach and Tori and family are the only ones on there. And um, you know, you just, you just- Are they getting burned out? Well, I think they might need a little break for the kids sake. Yeah. I don't know. So we'll see. We might do one more, but we'll see. We'll see what yeah. happens. You know, maybe they'll just do a you and Chris one. How's that? Oh, I don't know. I don't think we could be crazy <laughs> enough. I I look at it this way, you guys. Um, I I've got five more years till retirement, till that Medicare. Hopefully, Lord willing, will still be around. Um, and then, but you know, when you've been doing this for so long, I mean, it's 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 a job, right? And, yeah. I'm like, okay, what am I going to do after for five more years to, to, you know, get me to that, you know, if the show goes away, but you know, it, it's been all good, you know, the travel, the, um, just sharing our story and being able to do that in the very beginning. I, um, you know, like everything else, nothing's perfect. It was not the most easiest thing to do over time. Um, but then, you know, it becomes kind of routine. And I think it's just a reminder to people that every family is different. Mm -hmm. Every person, physicality or race or culture or whatever is different. But there's so, I mean, as we talk about Christmas traditions and holidays and, okay, we've got all these kids, what do we do? What do you do? But we're still, the commonality is we still enjoy celebrating this wonderful holiday. We still enjoy getting together with families. And we still enjoy doing these other things. And so, you know, trying to uh, just let people know, especially in the very beginning, I mean, people are used to it now, but, um, you know, what, what are the crazy little people doing, you know, whatever image that people may have had of dwarfism or little people, I think that is really the main reason why we first did this show, just to kind of yeah you might have had that image from the shows and the movies and whatever else you may have thought about or books or something but we may be different but we're still so similar to everybody else we still enjoy the things and you know like as kids we still want to be liked and have friends just like any other kid and you know as family we have different you know we have issues in a in a, a marriage relationship or raising kids but we still enjoy family and so it, it, I, don't, I don't like the word normalize. I like to say we're all different, but there's so many more similarities that we have in common that should be the more of the catalyst that brings us together is those similarities that yeah. really apply to everybody. Yeah. So, you know. Well, I wanted to kind of wrap up and just say thank you everyone for signing up for the cheesecake membership and oh yes fun so far and is there any other times or dates that you would like to participate I know we're doing this during the day are there better days like on a weekend or later in the evening just kind of would love to get your thoughts on that um and then we do have to wrap up by one uh yeah sorry I'm, my time is off that's okay I'm the timekeeper. That's why Amy and I were, were kind of tag teaming. <laughs> Thank God I have Lisa in, in you know, I'm not going to call her like she's in the background. She's she's very much in the forefront as well, but she does so much behind the scenes that, you know, when you when you find, you know, she's, her and I are very good friends, but when you find someone that we understand like, what we're good at and what we're not, yes. what we're willing to take on, Mm -hmm. what we may not like to do or good at and we'll do our best but 
we we're we're tit for tat. I think a lot. <laughs> we're Lucy and Lucy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how does that mushroom taste? Well, okay. I think it tastes great. It's the creaminess of the cream mm. cheese. And I didn't want to put a lot of spices in there because I didn't want it to hide the crab meat, but it's, and the crunch of the topping, like what you guys have done on your stuffed mushrooms. I love it. Mm -hmm. mm, darn, I wish well, I was there to try it. <laughs> but that'll just motivate me to want to make it. So I love that. It is good. I would probably have put this on a, um, a cookie sheet over our baking pan though. Oh, does a cookie sheet, the heat goes all the way around and yeah. Oh, instead of up. Okay. That's mm -hmm. good to know. All right. All right, ladies. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We really Wait, I have one more it. question. Okay. Email Lisa and we'll share whoever wants their emails to be shared with each other. I know Tammy yeah. and Justine want. Well, Carrie, we, uh, they had asked about sharing emails because we were talking about recipes and, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, they wanted how those recipes that we had talked about. Um, so if you want to be included on that, just email Lisa at arlittlekitchen.com. But anyway, we'll give that to you. The, the one last question I'd love for you. I mean, this is new to the subscription. Lisa and I will be meeting to plan out the next three months to give you guys the value of the cheesecake and, you know, uh, have more focused conversations or more cooking or more something else and a variety of other things, discount on pro uh, products and stuff like that. Um, is there anything else you would love to see from a subscription type of format? Email Lisa. If you don't, if yeah. you don't have anything that comes off the top of your head, email AR Little Kitchen just to at gmail.com. Yeah, at gmail arlittlekitchen at gmail.com. Um, because, you know, this is about me and you guys, but right. I also want to give whatever you're, because, you know, we're getting uh, feedback from other people as well, but uh, I, I'm just really curious as to, you know, what people expect and what would, and what they would like to see. One thing that just popped in my mind was maybe eventually thinking about meeting up somewhere mm -hmm for a uh, a live like event or whatever so that yeah. we can just you know if we're getting to know each other that we can just well you know what that would be yeah. really really cool i wouldn't mind mm -hmm. doing that so depending on where everyone is putting getting a central location because yeah. we'll plan the event and then um we all meet there we'll do some activities that's awesome and then, you know we'll have a conversation we'll have a q a we'll have um well, that will have to be after the subscription takes off. Yes, I understand. <laughs> but no, that is an excellent idea. Lisa and I have talked about that for years to do our mm -hmm. own, you know, I get together with Amy, you know, and, and just plan these activities and, and stuff that people would be interested. So I would call it like a, a conference is not a right word, but uh, like a small little getaway. And, yeah. just, and maybe have a few other speakers that I think retreat. Other enjoy. Yeah. A retreat. There retreat. you go. <laughs> Good work. Well, yeah. give these things a try, you guys. I like the yeah. uh, cremony mushrooms because they definitely hold up well. These are great. The white mushrooms as well. But um, I like yeah. them. They're good. Yeah. So I think I probably wouldn't do anything changing to this recipe necessarily. Except I probably should have put on there what type of pan to use. She always adds and adds. You're okay, Amy. Mm -hmm. It's all good. I know. <laughs> I, I know. Well, She's you her know, own when, worst critic. Well, when you've been in the we limelight or public figure of some sort, um, I tell you, people are really ready to pounce on one little oh. thing that um, you might have forgotten or incorrectly spelled or, you know... And I love good criticism or good thought input because I, I, I only learn and grow from that. But when, 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 when they really go after something that I don't find that important, I'm like, that, you kind of knew what I meant. So why are we, you know, but anyway, that's enough. All right. You guys, thanks. I want to wish Thank you a you. very Merry Christmas. Happy Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yep, and we'll see you in the new year. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.